There are seven kitchen dangers that are included in every meal you make, but how you outsmart or avoid them is really the key to be tr being truly safe in the kitchen. Uh, we're going to talk about the seven kitchen dangers today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. This is the weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. Of course, we're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And, you know, no matter what your question is, <laughs> where to find a recent video, what my live schedule is, something about your web cooking classes membership, it is all found in our new self-service automated help center. Don't wait for an answer. Get it right away at webcookingclasses.com slash help. Uh, because I'm a carefree cook, how about you? Yeah? Thumbs up, good? Yes, carefree cook? Well, say it with me then. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. But look, here's the thing. You're not going to love your cooking if it injures you in some way. Now, nobody loves that. The kitchen can be a really dangerous place, but I don't want you to uh, use that as an excuse to keep you from progressing your own carefree cooking journey. It might be dangerous, but it doesn't have to be danger for you, right? So there's a lot of dangerous stuff everywhere, every day, in everybody's life, and you wind up finding a way to work around it. How many times have you gotten hit by a bus? You know, you, you, you can avoid the buses. You figured that out, right? So you figured your way around it, over it, through it. You, you found some way to get to, to the rewarding destination that you wanted to get to. But look, we're, we're going to have to face all those dangers head on and figure out what to do with them. That's what we're going to talk about today. But first, uh, we have a what am I in the comments section below. Please, what am I? Tell me what this item is. Okay, so um, I usually don't give clues, but it's an item that you should have in your kitchen right now. If you don't have one of them, you should have one of them. What am I? Tell me in the comments section below. Okay, look, <laughs> well, once again, I'm so glad we're back together. I, I just, I, you know, I live for these Tuesdays. I, I just so enjoy, you know, it's great to be able to cook on Thursdays at 6.30 Eastern or at noon when we're doing our live cooking sessions. And yes, it, it's great to see me stir things, throw it around and how it comes out. That, that's fun. But before you ever get to that point, you've got to have the philosophy behind cooking. You've got to have the hows, the whys, the reasons, the science, the art, the, 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 the technology, you know, what, what is coming up lately. Uh, and that's what these Tuesdays are for. And that's one of the reasons that I love them so much. It can empower your cooking for when you are in the kitchen. And here we are again. Can't so seem to stop doing them. This is episode 123 of the Carefree Cooks Code, where we've explained food and cooking from just about every angle that I can think of. And I'm not, I'm not saying this is the last one. I've got more coming in weeks. You know, the Carefree Cooks Code on Tuesday, it, again, it's not a physical demonstration show. It's a mental exercise show. That, that's the way I think of it. The concepts, the insights, the techniques that's going to take your cooking much, much better to the next level once you do get back in the kitchen. So, I just keep doing it. Next week will be week 124. Week after week, writing, producing, spending hours on a 30-minute show because I know that I have the information that's going to make you a better and safer cook at home. And I started doing this in August of 2008. 
August of 2008. Think about that. I've posted more than a thousand free cooking videos all over the internet by this time. I've lost count of them all. Uh, I've created an online cooking school that's changed the lives of thousands of cooks. Thank you so much. If you're with us today, uh, I have written hundreds of essays and blogs about this pursuit of carefree cooking. I answer dozens of cook cooking questions every day from all kinds of sources. So why, why do I keep doing this? <laughs> it, it seems a bit obsessive, doesn't it? You know, wanting to teach people how to cook is one thing, but being live four days a week, every week for six months and 12 years of dedication, it's because I want you to cook your own food at home. It's that simple. That's it. I want you to cook your own food at home. And um, I want you to really enjoy the process too, right? You don't want to hate cooking. You want to enjoy it. Okay, so that's, that's not one thing that I want. That's two things that I want. I want you to cook at home and I want you to love doing it also. But I also want you to be safe. So, okay, that's three things that I want. I said I wanted one, then I said I wanted two, but I really want three. I want you to cook at home. I want you to enjoy the process and I want you to be safe. And I want you to express your creativity using repeatable methods of cooking like we do, the ingredients that you love for your diet or desires and that. All right, let, let, let's just stop at three. <laughs> all right, I can get carried away with all the things I want for you. Cook at home, enjoy the process, be safe. That's good. And I've talked a lot about the cooking process since 2008, but I realized I really don't spend that much time on safety. And having worked in some really big kitchens among dozens of chefs at one time, having taught culinary college students and home cooks alike, I could tell you that there are seven main dangers that can jump up and bite you if you're not aware of them. But once you are aware of these dangers, then it's simple. You just sidestep them. It becomes so simple because then you're cooking, you're enjoying it, and you're safe. It's the only three things I want. Well, maybe one or two others, but look, hey, let's get to it. There are seven kitchen dangers <laughs> and how you can avoid them. We'll go through this uh, uh, at a relatively good pace. Uh, uh, cool. So the first one we talk about is the obvious one. And this is the one that mom shooed you out of the kitchen when you were a kid. Uh, unfortunately, that makes the worst adult cooks, but it's the fire, it's the heat, it's the burns and cooking is the leading cause of home fires. It's the leading cause of people's houses burning down. So what you don't ever want to do is walk away from your cooking. And I see this posted in our community. Oops, it burned. I got distracted. I walked away. You, If you're there to cook, you need to stand there and cook. You don't do other things. It is potentially dangerous. Keep flammable things away from the stove. I've seen people take a cloth and wipe something and then toss it right next to the open flame. Be careful about that. Keep your stove top and, and your burners clean. Uh, you know, that old butter or dripped oil oil or burned on stuff can ignite as well. And keep loose fitting clothing away. Uh, it's one of the reasons that chefs roll their sleeves up to just below the elbow is because you never want to catch your, the edge of your sleeve on the flame, right? So being aware of the first of the seven dangers is the obvious one. It, it, you could get burned, but make sure that you are positioning things away from that open flame or even that electric flame like cloths, like, like uh, sleeves, things like that, so that you can sidestep this danger as well. Uh, the second one is a uh, food or, or food burns. Uh, the most common is steam. If you're cooking, you are a lot more likely to burn yourself with steam than you are to touch a hot pan or a saute pan, that seems really obvious. A lot of times you can't see the steam or the steam is underneath and you stir the rice and it releases all this steam. So the most common burn is steam. So one of the things you don't ever want to do is reach over another pot. I used to see culinary students do this all the time because we've, everyone has, you know, a spot on the stove, but in your home as well, don't reach across over a, a boiling or simmering pot. Uh, always turn pot handles to the side. Uh, it's really easy to either catch it with your hip or if you do have a sleeve, I've seen people gesturing or going to grab something and catch the handle 
inside their sleeve and just push a pot off the stove. So watch out for those pot handles. They should be turned in toward the middle of the stove or out to a countertop, but they should never be extending uh, uh, across the front of the, st- out the front of the stove. Uh, use pot holders. Don't ever use a wet towel. I've seen people get terrible burns grabbing a wet towel and then a hot pan where the moisture in the towel immediately turns to steam and then you get that steam burn that I told you about that is most common. Uh, Be careful of hot foods in a blender. Don't ever put hot foods in a blender. Put the lid on because of the expansion of gases under blending can blow your blender apart. You can get a food hot burn. Uh, Of course, always keep liquids away from hot oil. If you're doing any pan frying or even sauteing, uh, don't uh, hover your wet hand over it so that water would drip into the oil. It will splatter and then it'll hit your your, uh, skin and burn you. Uh, Keep ice away from hot oil. Also, oh my goodness, uh, the one of the best examples, well, first of all, a horrible trick that people used to do in the restaurant industry. When you have a plebe guy, like a real low guy, and he has to clean out the fryers and stuff, right before he goes to clean the fryers, you throw in a little bit of ice cube and it, a, a, a deep fryer will go insane with an ice cube in it because it, it changes states so quickly. It goes from solid to steam so violently so quickly. So you say, well, I don't own a deep fryer and I'm never going to throw an ice cube in it. But no, if you get French fries from the grocery store that are all packed in ice, I don't recommend that you put them right in your deep fryer or right in pan fryer. Certainly don't ever pan fry something that is frozen with all that moisture in also. Anyway, keep ice, keep liquids away from oil. Always use your thermostat to test the food first. And keep in mind that your mouth burns at 110 degrees Fahrenheit or about 45 degrees Celsius. That's not very hot. In, in the realm of cooking and, and the effects of heat on food, that's not very hot, so you are really likely to burn your mouth. Tasting pasta that you don't rinse under cold water first. Thinking that you're just going to be able to grab a little bit of that rice out of the pot and stuff it in your mouth and you stab yourself in the mouth with a fork. Always cool things before you taste them because your mouth really has a very low burn temperature. All right, the biggest insurance claim in the food service industry is slip and fall. Millions of dollars are spent on shoes and I used to buy my staff shoes uh, in my different executive chef positions. I didn't care how much it cost the company. Uh, they could, uh, My managers could yell at me the one thing that I was going to be sure was that there was no slip and fall and there are some specific shoes because think about a kitchen there are oils there are spills there's water it's usually slick tiles always make sure that you clean up spills immediately dripping something even just taking something wet from the sink to the counter you've got to get down there and clean that up because the next person come along is a slip and fall dripped oil uh, 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 sheet pans that might drip beef fat off them. We used to come around with salt shakers. In a commercial kitchen, if you spill fat on the floor, coming along with a with mop and water is just adding fat and water together. They don't they don't mix. You pour salt on it and we would come with a salt shaker and create an abrasive, let it soak up and then we would sweep up the salt. Uh, always make sure you wear rubber soled shoes even in your home kitchen. Uh, always cover your toes as well. Don't cook in flip-flops. If you drop a knife on your foot in flip-flops versus in sneakers, it's a much different outcome. (laughs) Trust me. Uh, Rubber shoes also when you're carrying heavy things, carrying a, a casserole. Make sure there's no slip and fall while you're carrying hot pots. A good friend of mine that I used to work with, Heather and I were just talking about him, Scotty, uh, my beloved uh, boss way back when, Scotty and I used to work together. And uh, when we were at the NSA, we were compelled, no matter who you were, you had to go to the main kitchen and pitch in another hour or two after your already 12-hour shift. Even the managers, and Scotty being the manager, had really nice leather sold shoes, you know, dress shoes. He's a, he's a manager. He's not a chef like me, but yet he had to help with, with, with production. And I remember one time Scotty carrying roast beef, I think it was like five, 10 pounds of roast beef, hit some grease on the floor and his leather shoes and up goes the roast beef and the hot oil on him falling. It was one of the most horrible slip and falls that I had ever seen to combine a few of the dangers. Uh, keep your pets out of the kitchen. 
you know, backing up and falling over Rover is not going to be good for either of you. Get a small fence if you have to. Uh, don't train your pets to come looking for scraps when you're cooking in the kitchen. It's dangerous. Uh, don't lift more than you can. Uh, be careful about things that are on high shelves. Be careful about heavy bags of potatoes, things like that. You can definitely injure your back on things, even things that aren't that heavy. Twisting, bending correctly, bending with a straight back and squatting at your knees to go take a sheet pan out of the oven, even to pick up a gallon of water. A gallon of water weighs eight pounds. Eight pounds on the bottom of your refrigerator can hurt a lot of people's backs. Squat with a straight back, pick it up and then squat back up. Good for your legs too. Uh, don't reach for things uh, without a ladder. Don't climb up on a cabinet or put your knee on the sink. Go get yourself a step tool. Uh, here's a big one in the commercial kitchen. Always look behind you. And in a commercial kitchen, if you're if somebody's at a stove or with a knife, you wouldn't want them to quickly turn around with their knife while you were walking behind them. You say, behind, look out behind, behind you. You might even touch their shoulder behind you. If you're carrying a heavy pot of hot liquid, you say hot behind, hot behind. That, that could get you in trouble with HR if you yell hot behind, but not in a kitchen because you're carrying a hot pot and you're behind someone. You want to make sure that they're aware. Uh, warn others that, that you're behind them. Like I'm saying, don't sneak up on somebody. Don't carry a knife around a kitchen with the blade out. Even in your household, you might be cutting turn quickly toward the sink to rinse your knife and find someone else filling with water. So be very careful of your surroundings uh, that go, all goes down to slip and fall. Speaking of knives and knife care, you always use sharp knives. A dull knife is a lot more dangerous than a sharp knife because you have to force a dull knife uh, and that's generally when it slips. A dull knife cuts through things in a jagged way, which is potentially dangerous turning your wrist as well. Make sure you got the right knife for the right job, please. Uh, don't use, you know, a, 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 a a uh, paring knife is a screwdriver. Uh, don't try and uh, cut a frozen item. Never. I don't care how big your knife is. Don't ever try and cut a frozen item. I've seen people take a chunk out of their chef knife trying to do that or flatten or bend a tip. It's just very, very dangerous. Uh, uh, your knife can slip as well. Make sure you're using the tip fulcrum method and the Kung Fu grip. It's the safest way to use your knife, where one hand has the kung fu grip and the knife rides off the knuckle of the other hand. If you always keep them in contact, there's no way to cut these fingers. But as soon as you separate them and extend those fingers, there's all kinds of ways to trim your fingernails. I, I know uh, salons are closed, but I would not suggest using your chef's knife to solve that problem. Uh, remember also, say it with me, a falling knife has no handle. If your knife is falling from the counter and your knife is about 20% handle and 80% sharp blade and you go to catch it, what are your chances of catching the handle rather than the blade? It's really, it's a math problem, okay? A falling knife has no handle. If your knife is about to fall to the floor, put your hands up. Those hands. Put your hands up, step back, jump back. If you're wearing flip-flops, definitely jump back and let that knife hit the floor. A lot easier to clean the knife than it is to clean up the blood. Uh, same thing with pot handles. Keep your knives away from the counter edges. Don't ever let a knife hang off the side of the counter. Don't ever leave a, chef, a sharp knife in a sink. You always wash your knife immediately. Culinary school, oh my goodness, we, we make the three compartment sink and one of them gets filled with very hot sudsy water. Somebody puts a knife down in the bottom of there. You stick your hand and fish around for what you think are your measuring spoons and, and you cut yourself. I've seen it happen. Don't ever leave a, a sharp knife in a sink. If you're wiping your knife, wipe across the blade, right? Down from the spine to the edge, not the way the knife is meant to cut, the length way along the blade, it is safer to wipe down the edge of the blade and always dry your knife on a towel by putting the towel on the, on the uh, counter, the knife on the towel, the towel over the knife and pull it out like it's in a scabbard, like it's a, like a sword, all right? Um, don't ever test 
the sharpness of your knife with your finger. You, you might laugh. I've seen it happen way too many times, especially culinary students. They get these brand new, very, very sharp knives. And first thing they do is like run their thumb across it and they start bleeding. <laughs> yes, successful, all right? If you wanna know how sharp your knife is as a former hockey player, the best way is to run your fingernail, your thumbnail against the edge of the knife and see if you come out with just a little shaving of your thumbnail. You can tell the sharpness that way or with a piece of paper, across a piece of paper. Do you know what the most dangerous cutting activity of all with knives is? Bagels. More people cut themselves trying to cut a bagel than any other item, uh, just the hard bread. So the way you do that is you have the bagel horizontally you set the knife just a little bit, then you stand it up and use it the way a knife is meant to be used, down against the counter. The horizontal cutting is very, very dangerous. And of course, trying to cut a frozen bagel is absolutely insane. Uh, speaking of cutting, let's talk about your cutting boards. A slipping cutting board is the most dangerous thing there is. Bringing your knife down and having the cutting board slip underneath you is very dangerous. Put a wet towel. Uh, you've seen me use the spongy shelf liner material. Uh, cutting boards at the wrong height can cause you back and wrist problems. Uh, I used to, uh, I, they thought I was like a magician. Very tall culinary students, guys that were like 6'3", 6 6'5", 6 6 uh, My chef, Greg, rest his soul, was 6'5". And most tables are, are not built at the height for people like that. So if you're a chef that's that tall, you're hunched over your, your prep table usually. It's terrible on your back, terrible on your shoulders, terrible on your wrist. What I would do is come along with one of the uh, commercial dishwasher racks that are six, eight, 10 inches high, put a wet cloth down on the table, put the dish rack on the wet cloth, put a wet cloth on the dish rack, put his cutting board on top of the di on the wet cloth, and now the six five or six seven foot guy is standing straight up, erect, getting the fulcrum that he needs with his knife from his shoulders, never had problems again. Okay, so cutting boards at the wrong height, it really can create problems. Wrong shoes at the wrong height can create problems with your back. Uh, pitted boards can harbor bacteria. Bacteria is what causes illness. If you have a board and a, a, or have a real sentimental attachment to it, too bad. Throw it away. If, <laughs> if it's nicked and scratched, it's got potential for bacteria. Get yourself a new cutting board. They're, they're not that expensive. Wooden cutting boards are forbidden in most commercial establishments because they can uh, uh, have foreign objects. They can splinter, put a splinter in your food. Uh, don't forget about the difference between clean and sanitary and cross-contamination. So you can take a cutting board right out of sink water, and if somebody splashes chicken juice on it, it's no longer sanitary. You might have sprayed it down, the water off it, but if it has nooks and crannies, it, it, it is unsanitary even if the visible dirt has been removed, making it clean. My suggestion is have separate cutting boards. Have them different colors or different sizes. If you see, I have different materials because of the porous nature of it, uh, of raw uh, items. So I have a raw board and a, a vegetable board. Uh, don't forget, cutting board can dull your knife. And then we get back to the last chapter, a dull knife is more dangerous. So make sure you have a cutting board that's gonna give to your knife, one that's gonna stay safe as well. All right, moving on, number six of the top seven, the bacteria, the no see -ums. No see -ums, uh, come from dirty sponges. If you have a sponge on your sink that smells, you need to get a new sponge or create a bleach solution to keep that sponge in so bacteria doesn't grow. The sanitizing solution of just a few drops of bleach in a quart of water will do it for you. Uh, no seams grow in the refrigerator. Poor refrigerator temperatures, 40 degrees Fahrenheit or four degrees Celsius is what your refrigerator should be. Poor cooking temperatures allow no seams to grow. 165 Fahrenheit or 74 Celsius is safe and fully cooked. I've already mentioned cross-contamination. You can cook something to 165 
and then put it in a pan that had raw food on it beforehand and you've got cross-contamination. Or cook the item really, really well and then not wash your hands and have cross-contamination because hand washing is the main way that food becomes contaminated. Two thirds of all foodborne illnesses because of hand washing. All right, let's bring it home. Uh, lastly, it comes down to unsafe cooking practices. If you're going to pour a hot pot of liquid, you pour it away from you. Don't, I know so many people do this. They take their hot spaghetti or their hot sauce and they pour it toward them. Steam up under your chin, always pour away, even if you lose sight of it for a minute. Uh, I mentioned this before, don't put hot pasta in your mouth, penne pasta, elbow pasta with boiling water in the middle of it. I've seen people burn their mouth and lips, R rinse it under cold water first. Um, be careful of hot casserole dishes, right? Uh, be careful of uh, having a good grip, good gloves. Again, not a wet towel. Uh, whenever you open your oven, I've seen people do this. They open their oven, they look in it immediately. You know, let that hot air come out. Let, let, let it out. Open your oven. Stand back for a minute before you put your face in there. Same thing with the lid of a pan. If you take the lid off a pan, don't immediately put your face over it. You're going to have a nostril st steam burn. Let everything come out first. And you've seen me do this in lives also. Smell things with a wave. Don't put your face directly over a boiling pot of, of tomato sauce. Stand back and pull with your hand, pull the smell toward you. It's fine, it's good. You're not gonna get a boiling sauce in your eye, you know? Look, I, I want you to be confident. I want you to be creative in the kitchen. Oh my goodness, that's two more things. What are we up to, seven? Now, I said I wanted one thing and now we're up to seven. I want you to be confident. I want you to be creative, but not if injuries happen, not if it injures you or somebody that you love. Safe cooking is so much better than unsafe cooking. So be aware, you know, be aware. I know all of us carefree cooks, I know we're having a blast in the kitchen. We're whipping up this and that. We're gathering all those compliments that we get, right? Because of our great original dishes. We're proud of what we cook. And, and that's all we ever really wanted. Just those seven things. <laughs> and I just want you to cook your own food at home and enjoy the process and be safe and be confident and be happy. And just like, I think cooking brings you all that. And, and while you are aware of your surroundings, okay? Cause it's a dangerous place. You're watching what's going on and you're really making the safest decisions during the whole process. That, uh, those are all the things I want for you. And you know, now we have even more dangers to be aware of in our everyday lives here. Nowadays, really just breathing the air, you know, can, can be dangerous in itself. But look, I, I don't want th these dangers to paralyze you. You know, I, there's always gonna be a danger around you, but, but you, you minimize them, right? You, you minimize, if not eliminate the dangers when you're aware of their presence, when you already have a plan to get around them and you practice safe cooking. It sounds strange, but the dangers are still gonna be there. They just don't affect you. There will be dangers, but it doesn't have to be dangerous for you, right? So that's the idea. Be aware is what we want. And you know, again, you can enjoy your kitchen, the fun, the artistic expression, the problem solving, the pride you get, you know, all of this, but be safe or none of that is avoidable. Okay, uh, speaking of being safe, the what am I today? It's a fire extinguisher. It's a antique fire extinguisher to try and trick you a little bit. If I just put a regular fire extinguisher, that'd be kind of dumb. Uh, so do you have a fire extinguisher in your kitchen? Can you get to it quickly? I mean, think about it. In, in an instant, where's your fire extinguisher? You might need it in an instant. If it's way back in a closet, if it's under the sink behind the garbage can, you might want to move it. And if you don't have one, go get one today, please. And look, if you know someone who wants to protect themselves from the seven dangers involved in every meal you cook, please like and share this video with them so they can be proud of what they cook and they can be safe while doing it. You know, you keep hearing me say this carefree cook, carefree cook, carefree cook thing. If you don't know what carefree cook is, what the elements of carefree cooking are, you should definitely get my free guidebook. It's the five forks to carefree cooking uh, because 
along your path to becoming truly free in the kitchen, you're going to have to make some decisions. You're going to come to some forks and which way you should go around it is either going to be freedom or frustration. So go to fiveforksguide.com to download your free copy today. Hey, until next Tuesday, when we try and figure out another key to cracking the carefree cook's code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye-bye.